All right, I'm gonna make a video today that's been a kind of a long time coming. This is actually my second time recording it, but this time it's gonna work. Is uh, doing the uh, a replacement fan clutch solenoid for the truck and aftermarket one. Hey everybody. <laughs> um, I would like to take credit for finding the part. I actually bought three separate parts, tried them. Somebody else did, and I bought the one that they got, and it seems like it's gonna work. So I'm gonna install it and show you how to do it. Mine looks all crazy because I've removed this like a dozen times. So you can see I had to like retap into my wires and stuff. So you could ignore the different changes and everything. And obviously I already have my panel off here, but I'm gonna talk you through installing it and I'm also going to talk about the differences between an LMTV and an MTV because on an MTV um, don't have any hands-on experience but I believe it's a double solenoid right here and this aluminum block is double the size and the, there's one solenoid for the fan clutch and there's a second solenoid that's for locking up the uh, intermediate axle. This solution you can actually use to replace both of those solenoids. Okay for the tools and stuff Shouldn't be anything crazy. Safety glasses, uh, drill. It's gonna be a really small drill. Some drill bits, a small like T-square thing for lining up some holes, pencil for marking it. Um, some small Phillips heads. I'm just gonna use an adjustable, a small quarter inch drive. Like screwdriver, you can get away without using this. Quarter inch drive ratchet with a 10 mil and an eight mil. A very thin flathead screwdriver, wire strippers and cutters. So for parts, uh, links to all this stuff will be in the description. But um, here's one of the solenoid valves. It's made by Nitra Pneumatics. Comes in this box. That's your uh, part number right there. AVP-31 Charlie 1-24D. And these are stackable valves. And I have some notes written on the instructions we'll go over. And uh, one side is about installing the valves and how to stack them, and one side is for the electrical. These are the little mounting screws for the bottom. Uh, it shows in here they're M4 by 0.6 by 8L. I think that's the length. Um, I actually pulled these out of my little bin, but I'll try to find a source for these because these are different than the screws mounting the existing solenoid so you are going to need these to mount them and then these are some various quarter inch OD tubing DOT fittings um, I definitely recommend using DOT fittings because it's on a truck that's on the road um, not here to argue any legality stuff just use the DOT fittings that's what I would do and then uh, some quarter inch 90 compression fittings I mean if you wanted to get straight depending on how you want to install this you don't need to copy my install and then uh, I also have a, a 1 8 NPT plug uh, these quarter inch OD compression by 1 8 NPT 90s again links in the description to this stuff and some of the stuff you can use off your old install but for the couple dollars that it is to get all new since you're tapping into it um why not and then some quarter inch od tube i already replaced the tubing up in the truck when i was doing my other installs but there's going to be a link in the description to that too i think for like 20 bucks you can get like 50 feet of it so you have plenty of extra to keep on your truck in case you have some other issues so let's move into removing what's on the truck all right so removing what you got in here the easiest thing is going to be removing your airlines from the fitting, unplugging your electrical, and then undoing. There's four eight millimeter screws holding this on. Um, obviously, you need to take this kick panel off. It's 10 millimeter bolts, and then the whole piece comes off. And then you have that hose for your little heater duct that you can either unclamp from behind that, or there's like a little twist lock fitting up here to the left and just get it completely out of your way. That way you're not fighting it. So disconnecting your electrical, um, there's some similar fittings that may or may not be hooked up. On my truck, they weren't, so I just wrapped a piece of tape so you wouldn't get it mixed up. Get that out of the way, that's your easiest one. 
if you're going to be completely replacing your airlines you can disconnect them uh down here the one that's coming off the t fitting is your air supply line and then the one that's by itself is the airline going out to your fan the one going to your fan is the one that's going to be farther in the back that's kind of a weird fitting this fitting is very very delicate it breaks um, I actually was able, I broke this and I was kind of screwed and my truck was stuck. Um, I found the parts and I actually have some of them for sale on my eBay store because I was able to find them and buy them in bulk. And in case you broke yours screwing around, um, I broke mine taking this apart a bunch of times. And I'm just going to undo these and stick them to the side. If you're replacing the whole thing, you can disconnect them down here and take the whole thing apart. Uh, I'm just going to use an adjustable and undo the airlines first. Okay, to just continue with the disassembly, these are also 8 millimeters holding the old solenoid on. Yours are probably not going to have washers. Like I said, I had done a whole bunch of taking this on and off and drilled a couple holes and things like that. So yours is going to look different, but that gets this off. So just put the bracket to the side right now. And like I was talking about, if you had wanted to, you can take this plug off and reuse it, and you can take this compression fitting off and reuse it. Personally, for the couple extra dollars, don't reuse it. Just kind of take this off, put it to the side, don't reuse it. I had already cut mine, but the next step that you're gonna need to do is just in case you need to reuse this, like I did, come one inch off and snip the wires. Okay, I got my things removed, but say you had cut yours at about that length. What is that, a quarter inch or eighth inch or so? Strip it off. And the first step we're going to do, because it's the simplest, is hook up our little wire connector for the solenoid. So we strip those, put it to the side, I'm going to flip over the electrical. Use the, the Phillips, screw all the way loose, and it pulls off put that to the side for now then this should only be like hand tight get that off and turn it upside down tap it you should get a little metal washer and a little rubber washer that come out as well then use your little flat and use this it should get your little connection piece out and that's where you're gonna make your connections the little nut part facing it towards the connector feed that Metal washer, rubber washer, feed that, then feed it up in. And then don't tighten anything up yet. <clears throat> then for DC valves, just mark DC on here. Number one is for the positive and number two is for the negative. I ohmed out the wires and Brown is the positive and blue is the negative. So you want to hook it up accordingly. It's also marked on here. So just to confirm, it shows positive on this side. You come over to the other side and it shows one. So you use that little flathead and open up your connector pieces. And it looks like they also have a spot where if you wanted to solder it on there, you could solder. That snugged up feed it back in what you want to make sure is that you didn't turn it around see like I turned it around so pop it back out you want the connector to be as it was when it came out of the package something like that so I'm happy with that but we're not gonna go any farther we're not gonna connect it right now we will make sure the rubber washer, the metal washer, will snug this down. I'm only going to really make that hand tight. This is only, this plastic's not super robust, but that's going to hold it together. I'm going to take this electrical piece, put it to the side. Now, as well on this, this may be a little snug. Undo, there's a little plastic nut. 
and you could take the actual piece off, this is where it vents. So that way we're just working with the hardware piece here. That way it gets all that stuff out of the way. All right, next thing I'm going to do is start moving on to putting the air fittings onto the solenoid valve. The thing I want to talk about quick is what I'd mentioned earlier about is if you have the MTV with the two of these. Now, if you could see real quick, I'm not going to talk about this too much because uh, you could probably look this up. But these are stacking valves, and what it is is they sell they sell kits where you can thread into here these special screws that then add threads and you can stack these valves up. So you would be able to add the way that these work similar to the other ones is your air comes in where it's marked P and then it's gonna continually pass air through and then the air is gonna be fed off or vented on as many valves as you want depending on the controls. So you can stack the valves and add multiple valves which is very similar to what is going on with this where this is your air coming in, this is mounted upside down, then this solenoid opens and closes to feed or dump, vent the air going to the fan this way, and this is capped off because nothing's going this way, but I believe on the MTVs this block is double the length and air feeds over this way and goes to the second valve uh, that either sends air or vents the air to lock up the intermediate axle. So in theory you can get that kit plumb the air to go to whatever else you want. Also, if you wanted to add some sort of other air accessory to the truck, like an air horn, you could tap into this uh, right here as well. Maybe use one of these valves too on a solenoid of some sort. But anyway, that's getting a little off topic. Just wanted to add, add that in. <clears throat> you can see there's an A, a P, and then there's an unmarked on here. The A is the feed that is gonna go out to the fan. The P, is the air supply coming in from the air tanks. And the unmarked is what's gonna get plugged or go to the next solenoid if you're gonna do what I just talked about. I'm gonna plug that up and then start putting my fittings on. Not gonna get everything super snug except the plug because then I need to determine exactly how I'm gonna mount it on this and then I will adjust them to how they're gonna fit properly. Okay, now that I got that lined up, uh, this is where the little T-square and the drilling comes into play. And I'm not going to be able to show you that because I've already drilled. Like I said, I've kind of had a couple things mounted up. Yours is going to have a hole here and a hole here. And those are the original holes that this one was mounted to. I found that the holes that are on the bottom of this, you can use that existing hole that's over here. And then just measure over a little bit, drill a hole right there and you should be able to mount it pretty good. So you can use the mini T-square, measure over, mark it, and drill the hole. Uh, I mean, you, you can measure it. I'm, I'm sorry, because I already have the holes drilled and they, they matched up and these holes are like oversized. I, I can't really give you an exact measurement. It's jacked up, I can just show you that. But it matches up, so then you'll be able to mount it. So you can kind of mount it wherever you want, really, because uh, the, the major thing to think about that I ran into when I was doing the other one is your your little coil here is quite big. So when you mount the coil, you need to make sure when your electrical connector, it's not gonna hit your kickboard. And that's something I'm gonna go over and kind of look at right now so I could advise you on how to mount this. All right, so after you get your holes drilled, the way that this bracket was normally bolted up onto the truck is the solenoid was sitting up towards the front of it and this part of it was going towards where the passenger was sitting. How I found it's going to give you plenty of room is if you spin it 180. And then you mount with the screws like that. And your fitting that is going to be going to the fan is facing towards the front of the truck and your air intake fitting is facing towards the driver. So I'm gonna mount it like that. Now, before you mount this to the green bracket, 
make sure all these fittings are tight because you're not going to be able to get rotations out of these. Same thing with your plug fitting. Now, if you're going to be doing this with the MTV, your valves are going to be stacked and you're going to have to mount it a different way. Um, that might just be drilling your holes completely different way. You're probably going to have your holes drilled a different way in the truck on your bracket. I don't know, but I just know that the valves will work for you and need to find a different solution. So I'm going to go ahead and mount this up. Alright, I got everything back together and tight, so I'm going to go mount it back up into the truck and hook the airlines back up. The uh, one thing that's going to need to be changed is the compression fitting that's going out to the fan, and I'll show you about that really quick. So on the compression fittings, the way it's going to go is you have your little actual compression fitting. You're going to slide that on first. Forgive me, I don't know what these are actually called. Then you have this, you're gonna slide in. And then you have the little tube thing. Then you slide that all back up and you start threading it in. And then what happens is with a brand new one, as you're tightening it down, it's gonna feel kinda tight and then it feels like it gets kinda loose again. And what that is, is it's the brass and everything all biting into the tube that first time. If you're reusing the fittings, it's not going to be like that because it's already bit in one time. And then when you reuse the fittings, you'll kind of see that this this brass and everything, it kind of stays put in one spot because it's bit in. It stays put. Um, and then when you're taking this fitting right here off, you probably won't be able to just slide it off. You'll have to just cut the airline somewhere right after it because if it's been on there for an extended period of time this is not brass on that fitting it's plastic on plastic it's probably just bonded to it so you have to cut it that's kind of why i was talking about just getting all new fittings and a spool of airline to just redo everything all right gonna start mounting it back up uh one little thing is with your eight millimeter when you're putting the bolts back up I shoved a little paper in there because these bolts are so short that you're not able to like go up and get them started. And remember, at least for me, I changed my orientation of the way it's going to be mounted. It's going to be pushed back. installed see if it works all right trucks aired up I just purged at the air dryer so let's see if the clutch solenoid dumps when I cut the power ooh that worked that's a good sign heard air go through it and open nice so next thing to check is let me climb out of the truck you know with the air off the clutch should be locked up and I should not be able to turn the fan. Always one handed should be fun. So, yep, yeah, that's locked up tight now. Power on. Now, the fan should be free. CTIS is going to check. She's working. Nothing obvious. It's not very hot. Um, if you're on the Facebook group, one of the issues I had with one of the other aftermarket valves was it got hot as sh It was like 180 degrees under here. And I was worried about it being a fire hazard. So I'm just going to leave this thing with power for a couple minutes and then hit it with the temp gun and see if it's real hot. So it's warm, but not the end of the world. Warm. Uh, it's nowhere near what it was. I mean, I can touch it, and it's not like scolding my hands like the other one was. So I think it's good. So the only thing to see with this now is longevity-wise. But uh, at the price point, I think it's going to be good. All right, so I put like 100 miles on 
with the fan clutch uh, solenoid replacement and it's working good. Can you open up the door? I just want to show it. It uh, was cycling good and everything. I did both uh, full, I want to say like 70% of the miles I put on were wide open throttle on the highway and the other was uh, all city driving through downtown San Antonio. So uh, it's working good. I mean, time will tell if it's gonna hold up, but for the price, it's gonna be good. So uh, I bought a couple extra of these. So since you watched all the way through the video, you can uh, leave a comment if you want one and I'll give one away in one week, one of the solenoids.